Okay, so this class is going to be administrated through uh, Blackboard. And Blackboard is going to organize and keep everything together for you so you can easily follow along with what's going to happen in class during the semester. So, for example, you may have seen my emails if you registered, you've been registered for the class for a while. And in the first email, I'm talking about getting the textbook. Now, the textbook, this is what the bound book looks like. They, this, the, there is a version of it available in the bookstore that's uh, sort of like a loose leaf version of it with a binder. And what's special about that is that it costs less money and comes with the registration card to um, the homework and test companion, uh, my finance lab. More about that in a minute. So now there is also... I believe when you go to my finance lab, there may also be a link to buy a digital copy of the book. I'll, I'll try and set that up and send, put it on announcements. So there's also a digital copy that's less than the bookstore. I think the bookstore is probably like, what, what, does anybody, anybody buy it yet? Yeah. One, 160 in the bookstore. I think it might be $99 if you get the online version and it comes with the access card as well. Yeah, so. Uh, if you want to do that, maybe it's not too late to return it. It depends on what type of student you are. If you're like me, I like a physical book. It's easier for me to study and highlight. It just works better with how I learn. If you're fine with an online book, then it might be better to get the online book because it's less expensive. So it really depends on how you feel as a student and what you prefer. Sometimes I know um, visually with your eyes, it's something easier to read a book than have to constantly read a screen. I just find with online PDFs or online documents, I just don't really, I never can really read them for a long time. So it's up to you. Uh, some students, a uh, number of students took that option last year and, and seemed to do fine. So what's important about the textbook is that I am, since you're buying the textbook, I'm including a lot of the textbook inside the class. Homeworks, materials, tests, so it's very much centered on the book. I know in other classes they have this whole reading list for you to buy two or three books, and then it's sort of like a, um, a wish list for the professor. By the end of the semester you find that you've only scratched the surface of a couple of these books and really kind of wasted your money. Have you ever felt that way? And, you know, that's disrespectful for you. So if I'm going to assign a book, I'm going to use it and make sure that it's closely tied into the course. So it's relatively easy to sign up for after you buy the textbook or if you have a used copy of the textbook or, you, or a friend gave you a textbook, you can buy the homework manager separately. You don't have to get the, the, the book with the card. You know, if you, if you get a used book, it, but you should look at the prices of buying it a la carte first. All right, so the instructions on how to, how to go to the homework manager are, are right here. And there is um, the course ID is in here, which is very important. It links you directly to my class. So these instructions will be how to get to, um, see if they give a, let's do it. No, I can't. All right, so let me let me just go to the course. Once you've actually signed into the course and registered for the homework manager, you want to go to assignments. And this is where I administer all the homework and tests. I got a pop-up issue, I think. There we go. Um, if you, you may have the turn off your pop-up blocker and some. It works pretty well in Chrome. So here I have the assignments uh, set up for class and they all have their due dates. So this way you can easily organize what assignments are due and when they're due. Once the assignment closes, I will not accept any late work. So make sure, if you're one of these people who have all these problems the night before the homework, you start your homework at 9 p.m., it's due at midnight, um, and then your internet goes down, your power goes out, your car doesn't work, somebody in your family died, your pet bit your sister. These all things, if these typically happen to you, do your plan to do it a day early. So when these happen, you have one extra day to finish. All right. Now, the, the cool thing about this class is all three tests are going to be online. So there's not going to be any tests in class. So after um, experimenting with this last semester, I had some, class, some tests in class, some tests online, and finding out that 
There was really no difference as far as how people scored. After teaching this class online all summer and having all the te uh, two of the three tests online, I found that they're generally just as effective online as they are in the classroom. And it really, uh, actually people do better on the in-class test than they do on the online test. So it's not like it's really that much different. When I say better, I'm only talking about from a, you know, say a 78 average to an 80 average, not tremendously, but it was, it wasn't significant enough to say that, you know, I can't give an online test because everybody's getting an A. And I don't, and the tests are pretty much the same. I don't make the online test harder than what I would give you in class. Here's the difference though. I, I did some research and I figured out why are the students not doing as well on the online class than the in-class test. And it's because of overconfidence. So for online tests, you don't study and you figure, I'll just look it up as I take the test. Why study? Why prepare? And then it takes you a lot longer to get through that test and you wind up running out of time. And that's when you lose points because questions you can't answer because they're a time limit. But when you have a test in class that you can't use your book for, then you study and you're well prepared. And when you take that test, you just go through it so quickly and you know what you're talking about. And it's a much quicker, easier experience because you, you're you're ready for it, you've done your work up front, you've prepared. So the difference in scores, why the online test people score less is because they don't prepare and they're too overconfident feeling that if it's an open book test, you may have fell into this trap in the classroom where a teacher gives you an open book test and then you come in the classroom, you haven't studied and you're trying to use the open book and you just really can't get the test done because you're wasting so much time teaching everything you learned in the last five weeks to yourself at the same time you're taking the tests. So that's what I've learned about it. But the homework manager here gives me the ability to um, set the tests up. And what's also nice about the homework manager, when you do uh, certain homeworks in here, they do provide uh, a certain amount of extra help. So for example, when you go into a question, they will, let's see, initialize. All right, they'll have some additional help on the side here where you can view an example of a completed problem. So if you're not sure how to do it, they'll actually show you um, an example. Uh, let's see, this is the example. They can show you exactly where in the book the question originates from. I think this is only available if you get the online book though. may or may not be, I'm not sure if you don't, if you don't have the online book, it actually may be available too. All right. How do we get out of this? Just had to, just opened up a new tab. That was all. All right. They um, f uh, sometimes they'll have a this. I don't think this has it, but some of can uh, direct the email link to me. I guess some of them actually have video presentations of somebody in a whiteboard showing you step by step how to do the problem. And those are some of the more complex problems. So the uh, online homework will actually give you a little bit more tools as far as where the question's coming from. Some the some questions actually have. An, another professor going over the exact problem. Okay. So there are some definitely some advantages. And the tests are very similar to the homework problems. Let's see. Let me save this. All right. And you can work on, you can actually work on the homeworks early. See if I can find one. I'd like to find one where there's like a little video of the guy showing you how to do the homework. They don't all have that though, which is unfortunate. But the view of the example is a nice feature where it'll give you an example of the completed problem. So sometimes uh, that's all you need is kind of see, see the, an example of it completed. So the homework manager has some definite advantages uh, to work with. All right. And the nice thing about the homework manager is if you get the question wrong, I let you redo it. 
So if you have some persistence and take some time, you can easily get the full score on the homeworks. So I don't, you know, if you fail and get the question wrong, that doesn't do me any good because you don't, you miss the opportunity to learn it. So I allow you to, to do it again, um, probably multiple times until you can get it correct. And usually it's just people who run out of time or are just completely frustrated that we get a problem wrong. Okay. So all the assignments in here, and when the tests come up, I have to go to the instructor side, when the tests come up, they will actually, the date of the tests will pop up and come into the mix of your homework problem. So, so here is my view because I see everything. Test one here is on September 29th. These dates are also backed up in the syllabus. But the test uh, one will pop up on your, on your assignments list. You just click tests or click all assignments and you take the test directly online. And then uh, this is actually I give you from 7 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. at night to do the test. So you have all day. You don't have that length of time to complete it. Once you start it, there's a certain amount of time, maybe two hours, you have to complete the exam, which is nicer with the online tests. I can give you more time to complete them. People constantly on my evaluation say that my tests were take too, are too big to fit in an hour and 20 minutes, especially if there's a 10-minute setup. You really only have about an hour and 10 minutes to work on it. I was constantly struggling with people to finish a test at the end of the class and collect them. So this will allow to give you some more extra time to do these, these exams on this. Okay. okay. Let's see. Now, So my finance lab, I have the website on uh, Blackboard, of course. So you would register as a student and, you know, you fill out, you may already have uh, an access if you had this previously, um, but it's important to have my course ID, which I showed you on the Blackboard before. And once you register, they should give you, although I think I have a link somewhere, I'm going to try and put it, let's see, course ID. Nugent 81517. 81517. All right. So if you don't have an account, you may have an account from another class. If you don't, you would have to create the account and then follow the instructions from here. And you'll see that my course will be in the side here and I'll give the information so you know they're registering for the right course. And then within there, there should be an option to uh, buy the online textbook with the access card if you don't want to get the loose leaf version at the bookstore. It's totally up to you. Uh, so this is a, a very nice environment. You get the results back in your homework immediately. You get extra help from the uh, textbook publishers of the website. And it's, I used it two times already and it's pretty successful. The only downside is that, you know, there is a monetary value of, of buying it. Uh, but it helps me because the homework is all, uh, it generates new numbers for each student. So it reduces the amount or the options or the chances for you to, to cheat and copy off each other because everybody, and the same thing happens on the tests. So when you'll get a similar problem, but the problem will contain different numbers and have, you know, different solutions for each student. So it's really difficult for students to collude and, um, share homeworks or share answers on their homework. And I had a real big problem with that in my other classes where I used, just took out problems from the textbook and students were sharing the homeworks and uh, I would have to change them every semester and it uh, became really difficult and cumbersome. So this is a, a good solution. And it also helps me with assessment for the course to, to meet our um, accreditation requirements. Okay, S any questions on that? No? straightforward. You may have done this in other classes. Okay. Great. The second thing is that there is going to be a stock trading assignment. We're going to run a simulation on stock trading and we're going to use market watch. So the link for market watch is here and the game password is just my last name Nugent. So you could just click on this, follow these instructions here to join the game. And it's going to open up a uh, trading 
session where together as a group, and this is not, this is the uh, spring game, and I made thirty-five thousand dollars. See, I told you I can make money. This is my return here, thirty-five. And I guess the biggest performance I made was on Amazon. And here's my portfolio. So you're gonna basically trade stocks here, and you're gonna learn what. What you learn in class, you're going to try and practice it and make your mistakes in this simulation, which works with real stock data from the real stock market. It's just fake money. Everything else is real data. And you're going to buy and trade stocks in here. Uh, so you're going to learn how to short sell, buy long, uh, buy to cover, um, limit orders, stop orders, stop loss orders. So we're going to do every, just about everything you do in a real brokerage account, we're going to do inside of here. Um, all right. And then it ranks the class as far as how everyone's doing. And you could see that I'm such a successful teacher. Now, everybody started out with a million dollars. My number one student, uh, Albert, made $175 million in here. Uh, number two uh, made $106 million. Number three made $2 million. Number four made, um, well, actually, we start out with $500,000 in cash. With margin, we leverage it up to a million. So anything over $500,000 is a profit. Uh, I came in seventh with uh, 30, uh, actually, I made 111000 here. $111,000 for three months. You're telling me you wouldn't take those returns? That's pretty good. I just have to pat myself on the back. And I wasn't even trying. Um, but you can see how much money you'll make just by taking my course and listening to me. I'm a wonderful professor. People make millions after they graduate from my classes. You know, and they usually, um, that's why I'm so wealthy, they, they tied back 10% of their salaries to me as a thank you voluntarily. I don't even ask, but they're just so appreciative. I couldn't do this without you and you're the love of my life. Financially speaking, not romantically speaking. Okay, so this is something you sign up for, you join the, the class, and then it's relatively easy. You follow the instructions. And then trading is very simple. I'm, I actually will post a, a YouTube video on how to trade uh, in the class. And, you, you know, you just, they'll give you a list of suggested stocks. Or you could type in a company. Maybe you like GM. Type in GM. Search. Here's GM. Click on GM. Oh, I don't want the information. I want to trade the stock. Let's go back. Let's try this again. The, uh, the Actually, this competition may be closed. I don't know if I can trade any stocks anymore on it. All right. Search. All right. Yeah, I think this, this actual competition is closed, so I can't trade anymore. But, um, hmm? I didn't hear you. The fall one is up. This is the spring one. So you can actually, I don't know if I could switch my games into the fall one. Let's see. Oh, I can. So in the fall, I've already made $82 in the fall session. And I think we have six players already uh, signed in. So they must have seen, got my emails. And I like that initiative for those six people. You're going to get um, 500 Nutrient points for uh, doing that. Oh, you haven't traded anything, though. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but um, trade some stocks. Get on the, uh, on the board. It does say there's six people in here, though. Okay. So I haven't really personally traded anything. But if I do want to trade, I can go to trading and type in a company. Maybe Microsoft. It's actually was right below. And there's this little single symbol here, trade. Click on trade. And I could say, uh, I don't like Microsoft. And I'm going to sell them short, which is something that I can do. Sell 100 shares short. And then submit the order. Done. Order was su successfully submitted. It's a 20 minute delay before it shows up in my account. But that's how easy it is to trade. It's very not very complicated. The thing that you may worry you is, well, I don't know what stocks to trade. Well, in the beginning, you're just here to make mistakes. So buy anything. And then later on, you could tell me what went wrong or why you shouldn't have bought it. 
or buy what you think you should buy and see what happens. And if it loses money, we can talk about how that was a big mistake and that you're a loser. I mean, your trade was a loser, not you. We're all winners here in this game because you now can't lose any money. Okay, moving on. So those are the two things, action items for you. That's why I emailed that earlier. So you need to procure the textbook, get the student homework manager, and register for the simulation. Okay. Now, in the uh, Blackboard, I have course documents, and I have the syllabus, which is really important. I'm running out of time. So in the syllabus, it's pretty much the standard stuff you read in most syllabuses. I, again, I have the textbook here. The learning objectives, what we, what we will hope to gain from this class. And I really want you to understand and apply the basics of finance in the investment area and learn how to interpret, interpret financial data and analyze information, uh, utilizing inf um, the knowledge of investments to be able to create a successful portfolio for yourself throughout your life. You know, and we're going to be talking about stocks and uh, options, fixed income securities. Uh, so my objective is really um, to help you understand what's valuable and what's what worth is and what makes a company successful and a good investment and how to calculate that value, put a number on it and determine the strengths and weaknesses of different valuation approaches when you're trying to figure out if a stock is something you should buy or sell. Uh, of course, for you, you are required to attend class regularly. Although I don't keep attendance, I do get a feel for who's here and who's not here. And if you're not here, you miss all these wonderful pearls of wisdom I have to give. And I don't record 100% of the class. There's a lot of things that we do off the uh, camera um, or off the YouTube where we're doing things I hand out um, different handouts to work and practice certain problems, uh, other materials I may bring to class. So half the class is going to be more tactile and learning as we're doing. And the other half of the class will be, I try to keep lecture to a minimum. I don't think it's the most effective way to teach, but sometimes there's some information I have to give out to you. Uh, I expect you to read the textbook, uh, do all the assignments in the homework manager. Uh, there's no makeup for the homework assignments, the midterm or the, exam or the final exam, unless you have a documented legal school activity or medical reason uh, or death in the family that you can demonstrate to me, then those are legitimate issues that we could schedule a makeup for. But everything else is, you know, I'm not going to give you uh, a second chance if you miss an assignment. So get things done early just in case. All right. The grading for the class, test one is 80 points, test two is 80 points, and the final is 90 points. And all three exams will be online. The stock trading competition will be 40 points. Yes, you have a question? Right. Um, he asked if the test will be non-cumulative, and they're non-cumulative because I don't want to torture you with a cumulative test. I tried that, and it failed, so uh, fail on that. So everything, will the test will just be of the chapters before it that we have to cover. The stock training competition will be 40 points. The homework will be 110 points. So the homework is more than 25% of the grade. That's why you need to take it seriously and take the opportunity of me allowing you to retry when you get something wrong and get that completed on time. And that will be basis of 400 points for the class. And you need, not, you need over 94 points to get an A. And at least a majority of the class does get an A or an A minus. Usually around at least 40% of the class to 50% can do that well. Uh, when you start missing homeworks, not participating, coming to class, that's when you fall behind. And it's a slippery, slippery slope. I do work hard during class time and with my handouts to get you the skills and the information you need to do well in the tests. So if you miss classes, generally your test scores will go way down. I have a way of sneaking the knowledge in in a, in a relaxed sort of fun way that is active learning where you're actually sitting here and doing problems and we're going over it. That really helps to prepare you and do well on the exams. Uh, that in conjunction with the homework. And if you miss those experiences, you're going you're to be difficult to do well in the exam. Sometimes, a lot of times, I'll actually look at some of the exam questions before class to make sure I go over it in class or make sure I give you an example of those problems in class to help you prepare. So I'm actively trying to make the class a benefit to doing well in the exam. So if you don't come to class, 
the exams probably won't go so well for you. And I won't get to know you and see your face. The more I see your face and know you, then generally the better your chances are if you need something from me in the future. If, if you come up to me and, and, you, and I don't recognize you and you're someone who just really wasn't present in my class, then I'm not putting you in front of the line as people I help or people who, you know, there's only so much time I have and I generally favor the students who are, I know and come to class and participate with me. All right. Okay, so I put the whole schedule of what we're doing from week to week in the schedule, including the dates and times of the exams, including the final exam. So all the chapters that the tests are on that they cover and the time and the date of the exams are all there in, on the syllabus. So you definitely want to know that, especially if you're planning an early trip home and want to have discount plane tickets, which, which is something I get quite often. Um, okay, and then just some legalese at the bottom that's on every syllabus. So that's the syllabus. Anybody questions on the syllabus? Yes. That's a great question. How do you get the full 40 points on the stock trading simulation? And it's very simple. All you have to do is trade five stocks a week from December, September 1st to December 3rd. So all you have to do is make five trades. That could be buy, you buy Apple, sell Apple, buy Apple again, sell Apple again, buy Apple again. Five trades. So you just have to make five trades. It could be one share, you know, five trades a week. For, from September to December and you get the full 40 points. I don't care if you lose all your money, you still get the full 40 points. This is the easiest assignment in the world. You just have to make five trades a week. You don't, if you make five trades in the last week of November, that does not count. You have to do five trades a week, not 50 trades the day before the assignment closes. Because that is not learning anything. That is just a way to get me all huffy. So, and snotty when you email me or I email you saying, what the hell? Yeah. He, oh, he's now working for a big hedge fund. I can't disclose how he's trading doing uh, the contractual reasons. So I can't really tell you his secrets. Not that I fully understand them either. He's a super genius, mathematical wizard. I just really, you know, he's beyond me, as you could see. So he should be teaching the course, but he's too busy making millions and millions of dollars. I'm not jealous. Okay, we only have eight minutes left here, so let me just go all through things a little bit quicker. The class handouts, there's a lot of handouts I give in class. I try to back them up here, and sometimes with answer keys. So these aren't homeworks. These are things we do in class for your benefit, um, to help you understand the more difficult concepts. And I, I try to, everything I give out or hand out in class, I try to back up on Blackboard for you. The, um, some of the handouts, I actually created video solutions. So, so if you didn't quite get it in class, you can watch it again while you're home. And those are part of my YouTube channel. I'll send you a, um, a link to the YouTube channel so you can subscribe because I'm going to try to, that's where I post all the backup videos to this class. I'll post on there. Um, now, once you subscribe, also frequently like my videos, whether you like them or not, so I can get a higher rating because I'm into being liked on YouTube. You know, so far I have five subscribers and 16 views. I'm going places. All right. PowerPoints, all the PowerPoints I'm going to be using are backed up on Blackboard. And the assignments, in the assignments area, there's really the stock trading game, which you just have to sign up for. And then there's the My Finance Lab. So everything is done through My Finance Lab, except for the stock trading, which would be, um, all right. And that's it. That's pretty much the whole blackboard. Okay, so next class, we're going to start in with chapter one and start talking about the, um, the first chapter in the textbook. And hopefully by next class, I would uh, really appreciate it if you were able to get the textbook and sign up for the homework manager and more importantly, the stock trading simulation. Okay, I'll see you Wednesday. Have a good week.